Welcome to section 28 of viruses. This is our virus overview figure, and in this video, we'll be discussing hepatitis D virus, or HDV, which you can see right here. This scene will take place out in the country with some dogs herding cows. Notice that the cows have liver spots on them, which should make you think of hepatitis. The dogs should make you think of the letter D. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that this image is all about hepatitis D virus. Now you can see that we've added an airplane to the image. If you look closely, you can see that it's a Delta airplane, which is a very popular airplane company. This is here to help you remember that HDV belongs to the Delta virus family. Before we go any further, also notice that we've included a lot of warm colors to the background. And this is to help you remember that HDV is an RNA virus. If you look closely at the sky, you can also see some dark clouds and rain, which is to help you remember that it's a negative sense virus. Next, notice that we've added a cowboy attempting to herd these cows with his lasso and his dogs. You can see that he's formed a circular shape with his lasso, which is to help you remember that HDV has a circular shaped RNA structure. You may have also noticed the pregnant woman on the back of the cow and that she has the letter S on her shirt, which is our recurring symbol for sexual transmission. The fact that she's pregnant should also help you think of perinatal transmission. So together, these ideas should help you remember that HDV is sexually and perinatally transmitted. All right, now you can see that we've added a huge beehive to the image. If you recall, the B is our symbol for hepatitis B virus. So we've included this in the background to help you remember that HDV is dependent on hepatitis B virus to cause infection. This can be a bit tricky to understand, so let's pull up some images to understand it conceptually first, and then we'll return to the image to help you memorize the details. This is an image of hepatitis D virus infecting a hepatocyte. First, notice that hepatitis B virus, or HBV, is shown inside of a hepatocyte so an HPV-infected hepatocyte. You can also see that a nearby hepatocyte just died, releasing a bunch of hepatitis B viruses and particles. In other words, this diagram is depicting the liver of a patient with a chronic hepatitis B infection. You can see that hepatitis B is coated with little particles known as the surface antigen, so hepatitis B surface antigen. These antigens are present in the extracellular space, which you can see right here. Normally, if a patient becomes exposed to hepatitis D virus, nothing will happen. However, in the presence of a hepatitis B infection, you can see that the surface antigens latch onto and coat the surface of hepatitis D virus, which you can see right here. This essentially activates hepatitis D virus, allowing it to penetrate the hepatocyte. Because this image is depicting the liver of a chronic hepatitis B virus infection, the type of infection caused by hepatitis D virus is termed a superinfection. So if you have HBV already and then you become infected with HDV, it's termed a superinfection. On the other hand, if the patient is not a chronic carrier, the only other way to become infected with HDV is by an acute co-infection. So you can see that in this image, we've shown both viruses in the extracellular space, and they're infecting the hepatocyte at the same time, so both HDV and HBV. These details aren't as important as just remembering the overarching idea, which is that hepatitis D virus must be coated with hepatitis B surface antigens in order to cause infection. So in both a superinfection and an acute co-infection, notice that hepatitis D virus was coated with the surface antigens of hepatitis B virus. All right, to help you remember this, we've added a bunch of people running away from the bees. You can see that the bees are attacking them, so they're running away, taking their coats off, and bringing them near the dogs. The bees are a symbol for hepatitis B, and the coats should help you think of the word coating. So together, this part of the image should help you remember that hepatitis D virus must be coated with the surface antigen of HBV to cause infection. All right, let's move on. Notice that we've added a cow that is stuck in a patch of dead fibrotic looking weeds. This is our symbol for cirrhosis because this is due to scarring and fibrosis of the liver. So we've included this in the image to help you remember that an HDV infection increases the risk of cirrhosis. Finally, we've added a nearby building that's getting destroyed by the bees. I guess those people with the coats must have really pissed off the bees. You can see the roof getting destroyed and all the windows shattering into a bunch of little pieces. The shattered glass on the ground is here to help you remember that a liver biopsy of a patient with an HDV infection will show ground glass hepatocytes. This is similar to HBV, which makes sense because HBV must be present in order for HDV to cause an infection. This is an h and &E stain of hepatitis showing ground glass hepatocytes. As you can see, there are many little eosinophilic particles in the hepatocytes, and this is referred to as ground glass. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 33-year-old male presents to the physician due to three days of right upper quadrant abdominal pain, a subjective fever, and jaundice. He has been with multiple male partners over the past several years and is worried he has HIV. Serological markers are drawn and reveal the following. 
hepatitis B surface antigen positive, IgG hepatitis B core antibody positive, hepatitis D RNA positive, HIV-1 antibody negative. This patient's acute condition is most likely caused by a virus with which of the following features? A. A partially double-stranded circular DNA virus. B. A single-stranded negative sense circular RNA virus. C. A single-stranded positive sense linear RNA virus. Or D. Two copies of a single-stranded positive sense linear RNA virus. In order to have gotten this question right, you needed a basic understanding of both hepatitis B virus and hepatitis D virus. The three days of right upper quadrant abdominal pain, a subjective fever, and jaundice are suggestive of acute hepatitis. Multiple male partners makes HBV, HDV, and HCV all possibilities because these can all be transmitted sexually. However, the labs really tell us what's going on. The first two labs are telling us that the patient has a chronic hepatitis B infection. The IgG hepatitis B core antibody test is perhaps the most important here because the presence of IgG tells us that the patient has a chronic infection, whereas the presence of IgM would tell us that he would have an acute infection, but this is not the case. Therefore, we can conclude that this patient is a chronic carrier of HPV. Also, the presence of hepatitis D RNA means that his acute condition is most likely due to an HDV superinfection. The word acute is key here because it's true that he does have a chronic hepatitis B infection, but he does not have an acute hepatitis B infection. Rather, his acute condition is caused by a hepatitis D superinfection. Therefore, the correct answer is B, a single-stranded negative sense circular RNA virus. From the image, recall that the circular lasso right here should help you remember that HDV has a circular structure. The warm colors should help you remember that it's an RNA virus. The rain cloud should help you remember that it's a negative sense virus. And because we didn't show anything about it being double-stranded, you can assume that it's a single-stranded virus. This is an image depicting a superinfection, which is exactly what the question stem was describing. The patient was a chronic HBV carrier and then suddenly was exposed to hepatitis D virus and developed a superinfection. A is true of hepatitis B virus, but again, the patient's acute condition is caused by hepatitis D virus, not HBV, so A is incorrect. C is true of hepatitis A virus. However, this is not sexually transmitted and would not present with the lab findings presented to us in the question stem, so C is incorrect. Finally, D is true of HIV. However, the HIV-1 antibody test was negative, so this patient does not have HIV. So again, the correct answer is B, a single-stranded negative sense circular RNA virus. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about hepatitis D virus.